Your light has come. This is a guide that you have been manifesting and that your breakthrough is near. You now have to ensure you listen to this audiobook carefully, for in it, you will get your answers. He who knows how to listen not only is popular everywhere, but in time he learns something. Wilson's quote. There is a way for you to be number one. The reason it's so easy to earn far more money than the average man earns in this country is that so few, so very few, are going about it the right way. This is a race without enough contestants to bother about. The few who are really in the race can all be winners. Some will finish ahead of the others, but even the man who finishes last in this race will be financially secure. Most people, more than 90%, aren't even in the race. To gain a deeper understanding, ask a wide range of individuals about their financial plans and strategies. Inquire about their daily habits, their attitudes towards money, and the specific actions they take to improve their financial status. You'll find that the majority of people have no concrete plans or goals related to increasing their income or achieving financial independence. They go through life without giving much thought to their financial future, content to follow the status quo. This lack of proactive thinking is the primary reason why so few people manage to attain financial security. You see, people who earn large incomes aren't lucky, and they're not crooks, as those without money are so fond of pretending. Nor are they endowed with more brains or talent necessarily than their friends and neighbors, nor are they privy to occult secrets, and only a very few were lucky enough to have had rich fathers or grandfathers. Most of the people earning the big incomes today started the same way you and I did, and most other people. The only difference between the men who earn big incomes and those who earn small incomes is that those earning big incomes decided to earn more. They're the people who made it their business to earn more. It's crucial to understand that financial success is not a matter of luck or inheritance for the vast majority of wealthy individuals. Instead, it's about the deliberate and consistent application of certain principles and practices. Successful people set clear financial goals, continually seek ways to increase their income, and are disciplined in their financial habits. They educate themselves about money management and investment strategies and apply this knowledge to their lives. This proactive approach is what sets them apart from those who struggle financially. You see, a woman who does not think about baking an apple pie for dinner tonight will never think of looking up the recipe for apple pie. Without the decision for pie, there's no motivation for checking out the recipe. Similarly, a man who does not think about driving his car to St. Louis, Missouri or Nacogdoches, Texas will never get roadmaps to show how to get to St. Louis or Nacogdoches. And a man who never decides to earn more money will never think of learning how or looking up the rules for earning more money. You see, people do what they make up their minds to do. So get rid of the ancient superstition once and for all that people who earn big money are special people or lucky or get the breaks or had money to begin with or knew someone or are smarter or anything else. These are all lies. They can all be disproved a thousand times. Instead, recognize that financial success is achievable for anyone willing to put in the effort and make the right decisions. It starts with setting clear goals and then taking consistent, purposeful actions to achieve those goals. To illustrate further, consider the importance of continuous learning and self-improvement. Successful individuals often invest time and resources into expanding their knowledge and skills. They attend workshops, read books, take courses and seek out mentors who can guide them on their financial journey. This commitment to personal growth enables them to identify and seize opportunities that others might overlook. They are constantly looking for ways to add value, whether through their work, investments or entrepreneurial endeavors. Another key factor is resilience and perseverance. 
The path to financial success is rarely smooth or straightforward. There will be setbacks, failures, and challenges along the way. However, those who ultimately succeed are the ones who refuse to give up. They learn from their mistakes, adapt to changing circumstances, and keep moving forward despite the obstacles. This determination and persistence are what allow them to achieve their financial goals. In summary, the difference between financial success and failure lies in the mindset and actions of the individual. It's about making a conscious decision to improve one's financial situation and then following through with consistent, strategic efforts. By understanding and applying these principles, anyone can increase their income and achieve financial independence, regardless of their starting point. So, start thinking constructively about your financial future, set clear goals, and take proactive steps to reach them. The journey may be challenging, but the rewards are well worth the effort. The reason there are so many of these lies around is that men who fail to make the grade financially are seldom honest enough to just admit that they really didn't try and keep trying. Instead of acknowledging their own lack of effort and perseverance, they create and perpetuate myths to justify their lack of success. These myths serve as convenient excuses, allowing them to remain in their comfort zones without making the necessary changes to improve their financial situations. So, in order to justify their failure, in order to remain seated, they dream up and pass along these old lies. We're all self-made, but only the successful will admit it. The successful individuals understand that their achievements are the result of their own hard work, dedication, and strategic thinking. They recognize the power of taking responsibility for their own lives and decisions. Every day, look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, Today, I am going to do the best I can in whatever I undertake. Then, do what you set out to do. If at the end of the day you didn't succeed, don't worry about it. When you make the most of what you have, you'll find that it's more than enough to reach your goals. You'll also find that the more you use what you have, the more of it you'll get. Remember that I can't and I will try never get you anywhere, but I'll do it always does. Just remember that happiness doesn't depend on who you are or what you have. It depends on how you use it. Visualize success, boost your self-confidence and make your accomplishments bigger and bigger. Assuming that everyone knows that self-confidence is a key trait for anyone who wants to be successful, the question is where this confidence comes from. Why are some people full of confidence while others are scared to death of not believing in their own abilities? The truth is that self-confidence and success go in cycles. Confidence derives from success and breeds more success, while success in turn breeds confidence. One might think, according to this explanation, that the circle of success is something like the old question of which comes first, the chicken or the egg? And how do we get into that cycle? The answer is simple. If you want to become more confident, you must look at the small successes you have achieved in your life and nurture the images and feelings that those triumphs have given you. Forget about the defeats and failures that we all experience. It is true that you learn something from failures. But once you have learned those lessons, forget about the defeats and keep thinking about the triumphs you have had in your life, contemplating them and nurturing them. You will be nourished by those successes and your confidence will grow, allowing you to achieve greater successes. Visualize your past triumphs while visualizing and anticipating future victories. Planting the seed of positive expectation in your mind is the best way to reap positive fruit in the future. Write down your five or ten biggest wins, think about them and feel the great joy you felt when you achieved them. Then, think about what you want to accomplish and get to work on it. Stay patient and the victory will come to you. God answers our prayers in very interesting ways. God asked Moses, 
What is that in your hand? Moses replied, A rod. The Lord then told Moses, I will use the rod that is in your hand to save the Israelites. And I know what some people say, if I had the money that Rockefeller has, the voice of a singer, or the intelligence of Einstein, what things would I not do for the Lord? It's very easy to put an end to this kind of thinking. If you're not using what you already have, you won't use what you don't have. What do you have right now that you can use right away? Use your skills the way God would want you to use them and make the best of what you have and where you are right now. Instead of thinking you can do someone else's craft better than he can, try doing your own craft better. Jesus says in Matthew 7, 7, part of the Sermon on the Mount, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Know what you need and ask God for it. A big problem with prayer is not God, but the person praying. Write down what you want to talk to God about. If it is right and good, he will open the door and give it to you. Decision, action, and persistence. Teresa Bloomingdale said she never saw tragedies. In 1975, a tornado destroyed her house, but she and nine of her children were safe in the basement. When the storm was over, her first thought was, we were going to move anyway. Now I won't have to pack anything. Now that's an optimist. She thought back and said, at home, I had two dogs and three preschoolers. I would write at the dining room table with one baby on my lap and another barely crawling between my legs because if I let him out, I would wreck the house. Teresa wrote whenever she had time. After many rejections, she sold her first article for $10. They only used one paragraph of the 3,000 words she sent, but she kept writing. In 1977, her first book came out. In 1982, she was accepted as a contributor to Macaulay's magazine, and soon after, Doubleday Publishing signed her to a $200,000 deal. Teresa Bloomingdale couldn't stop a tornado, but the tornado couldn't stop her determination to succeed. No matter how small the steps are, go ahead and take them. They will lead you to your goals. Don't give up, but if you have to, work like a vision, overcoming, overcoming obstacles. David W. Hartman of Philadelphia became blind at the age of eight. He wanted to become a doctor, but when he applied to Temple University School of Medicine, he was told that no sighted person had ever taken the course. David resolved to give it a try. He enrolled in the faculty at Temple and was immediately presented with a seemingly insurmountable obstacle, textbooks. There were no medical textbooks in Braille, the sign system used by the blind to read and write because there had never been a need for them. Clearly, making Braille texts for a single student was not economically feasible. So David appealed to the Recording Organization for the Blind and had over 25 complete texts recorded for his personal use. At the age of 27, David W. Hartman graduated as a physician, the first blind person to complete the course in medical school. It so often happens that our goals are too low, our thinking too negative, our vision too limited. What do you really seek in life? Is your goal or ideal as impossible as that blind eight-year-old boy who wanted to become a doctor and succeeded? Set aside your limitations imposed by destructive thinking. Set your aim and aim higher. As long as you don't try, as long as you don't test, you won't know how much you are capable of. Have faith in yourself. What others think doesn't matter. Ralph Waldo Emerson Here's an example of how to become what you want to be. He wrote for nine years before a publisher would accept one of his books or a magazine would take one of his articles. He was George Bernard Shaw and he was never discouraged. That's why he became one of the world's greatest writers. If you have listened to one of my previous audios, you will know that I am very enthusiastic about perseverance. In most of the audios, I try to remind people of the importance of perseverance. I'm afraid that in our society, 
We have become very accustomed to the instantaneous. We have instant mashed potatoes, instant noodles, instant chicken, instant tea, instant coffee, and so much more. On top of all this, we expect to achieve instant success. But that will hardly, if at all, be the case. Whoever wants to succeed in life has to learn to persevere, and in what way can he do so? It cannot be easily condensed into a simple statement, but of one thing you can be sure, and that is that you have to define your purpose. Only those who know exactly where they are going and why they want to get there can keep getting up after the falls and trying again. George Bernard Shaw had a definite purpose, and that is why he struggled on for nine whole years before he saw his work published. Decide what you want. Decide how much you are willing to give in return. Set your priorities and get to work. H. L. Hunt A recent study shows that giving up is an acquired habit. You can learn to be perseverant or consistent as easily as you learn to give up. Biologists and psychologists have been conducting experiments that confirm how powerfully our mental attitude can affect the outcome of our lives. At John Hopkins University, researchers have discovered that laboratory animals can learn to give up. If a mouse is held so firmly in hand that no matter how hard it tries, it cannot escape, it will give up the fight against the impossible. If it is then thrown into a tank of water, it will make no effort to swim to shore. He has learned to give up. Although we humans are certainly not mice, we can choose our life habits. Fortunately, we can make an optimistic choice, one of responsibility and hope. We can develop the habit of not giving up. We can program our mind and heart to always go forward, fighting doubt, pain and fear. Through this process, we can overcome seemingly insurmountable obstacles. In fact, one of the main messages I wish to convey to you is, hang in there, keep persevering, you will eventually see your goals realized. Genius is the ability to keep working hard, and a king is someone who controls his own emotions, wants and fears. We can't succeed if we only decide to do something half-heartedly. When things get tough, we won't be able to put in the extra effort that's needed to win. Now, if you are 50 or older, you should know that your most creative years are still ahead of you. Even if you have to retire from a job, you still have a lot of wisdom and experience that is useful in the market. Don't give up, my friend. The best is yet to come. Age shouldn't be a reason to get plastic surgery. It should be a reason to show the world the wrinkles and furrows of experience and the firm lines of character and wisdom. Ralph Barr You have the best chance of success if you keep going after your goal. Aim at the target and keep shooting. You must have the courage and confidence to keep fighting, even when things seem to have stopped or when problems seem impossible to overcome. Failure is usually the result of not trying hard enough. The worst loss of all is losing enthusiasm. I once had occasion to visit Charleston, South Carolina. I'd never been there before, so I hired a taxi to drive me around the historic old town. Charleston is a city rich in history and culture, with its charming streets and well-preserved architecture. I particularly wanted to see the battery, where that famous shot was fired on Fort Sumter. This area is not only historically significant, but also visually stunning, with its waterfront views and grand homes. Along this beautiful drive, some of Charleston's oldest and finest homes look out over the bay. These homes, with their elegant facades and sprawling gardens, are a testament to the city's affluent past. I commented to my cab driver on what lovely homes they were, and he said, yes, some of those homes have 40 rooms. This statement highlighted the sheer opulence and scale of these historic residences. And then he thought a moment. He said, and every one of them is owned by a crook. This cynical remark was his way of rationalizing why he didn't own such a home himself. It reflected a common mindset among those who haven't achieved financial success, 
a tendency to attribute others' wealth to dishonesty rather than hard work or ingenuity. This is how the have-nots justify themselves and their lot in life. By believing that the wealthy are inherently corrupt, they can avoid confronting their own shortcomings or lack of effort. I didn't say anything because I didn't feel I was entitled to advise him or try to straighten out his thinking. This is a free country where, as long as he doesn't hurt others, everyone has the unalienable right to be just as wrong as he wants to be. As L.S. Berry, the American scholar and educator put it, we must view with profound respect the infinite capacity of the human mind to resist the inroads of useful knowledge. This quote poignantly captures the human tendency to cling to comforting falsehoods rather than embracing challenging truths. My taxi driver and men and women like him all over the world have been kidding themselves, holding themselves down and refusing the bounty and abundance of the world for centuries. They choose to remain in their comfort zones, avoiding the hard work and changes necessary to improve their circumstances. Knowledge is available to everyone. In today's information age, we have unprecedented access to educational resources, financial advice and success stories from around the globe. We can either listen to those qualified to teach us or we can go along with those ancient stumbling blocks we get from people who don't know any more than we do. The choice is ours, to seek out and apply valuable knowledge or to remain stagnant, accepting mediocrity and falsehoods. The truth, incidentally, about those homes along that beautiful drive is that they were built by the men and women who made the largest contribution to the city of Charleston. These individuals weren't necessarily crooks. They were people who saw opportunities, worked hard, and contributed significantly to their community's growth and prosperity. To further illustrate, let's consider the mindset of those who built these grand homes. They likely possessed qualities such as vision, determination, and a willingness to take risks. They invested time and resources into their ventures, understanding that success doesn't come overnight. They learned from their failures and persisted despite setbacks. This proactive and resilient approach is what enabled them to achieve great things and leave a lasting legacy. On the other hand, those who remain stuck in the have-not mindset often shy away from challenges and avoid taking risks. They may fear failure or lack the confidence to pursue their goals. This fear and inertia keep them from reaching their full potential. By blaming external factors or labeling successful individuals as dishonest, they can avoid the uncomfortable truth that they need to change their own behavior and mindset to achieve success. Furthermore, it's important to recognize the value of seeking out mentors and role models. Surrounding ourselves with successful, knowledgeable individuals can provide guidance, inspiration and practical advice. Learning from those who have achieved what we aspire to can shorten our learning curve and help us avoid common pitfalls. By being open to new ideas and willing to learn, we can significantly improve our chances of success. In conclusion, financial success is largely a matter of mindset and effort. We must take responsibility for our own lives, seek out and apply useful knowledge, and be willing to put in the hard work necessary to achieve our goals. By doing so, we can overcome the lies and excuses that hold us back and create a future of abundance and prosperity. The choice is ours, to remain among the have-nots, blaming others for our circumstances, or to become the self-made individuals who acknowledge and embrace the power of our own potential. In just a moment, I'm going to give you the formula for getting rich. But before I do, I want to remind you of something fundamental. Before a jet pilot begins his takeoff from an airport, he carefully goes over a checklist item by item. This meticulous process is not only because it's required by law, but because he cannot afford to trust so important a job to his memory alone. The stakes are simply too high. A single overlooked step 
could lead to disastrous consequences. He has another checklist that he goes over just as carefully before he begins his letdown at his destination. He does this without fail every time he takes off and every time he lands. This routine ensures that he has covered all bases and has minimized the risks associated with flying. Well, I think living successfully is as important as flying an airplane, and because of this, I think each of us needs a checklist too. Life, much like a flight, involves navigating through various phases, each requiring careful planning and execution, and that's why there's one included with this cassette. We need a checklist to go over item by item before we take off in the morning and before we drop off to sleep every night. This checklist serves as a daily guide, a constant reminder of the steps we need to take to achieve our goals. So I want to recommend that you affix the checklist to your bathroom mirror, stare at it as you brush your teeth in the morning, and stare at it again as you prepare for bed at night. By making it a part of your daily routine, you reinforce the importance of each item and internalize its significance. Go over each item, and as you do, think of what each item represents. This reflection helps you stay focused and committed to your objectives. Now, here's number one. It's the formula for getting rich. This formula is not just a pathway to wealth. It also explains why you're in your present position, whether you're earning $6,000 a year, $16,000, $60,000 or $600,000. It applies universally to every adult, whether he's employed or unemployed. It applies to the richest man and to the poorest and every person in between. And here it is. Our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to our contribution, our service. This principle underscores the fundamental law of cause and effect. The effort and value you contribute to society directly influence the rewards you receive. Now that's what the formula means. It's the first item on your checklist. Memorize it. Our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to our contribution, our service. This concept is simple, yet profound. Listen to it. Think about it, until you know it emotionally, as well as intellectually. Internalizing this idea will transform your perspective and drive your actions. It might give you some slight feeling of superiority to realize that there's probably not another man within a mile of where you live who knows it. This knowledge sets you apart and gives you a distinct advantage. You can add it as a question on your survey if you want proof of that. If you want it in another form, here it is, as it applies to a man's job. It's the same thing, really. The principle remains consistent across different contexts. The same thing applies, but you can express it differently. The money you're paid by the company you work for will always be in direct ratio to the need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the degree of difficulty involved in replacing you. This variation of the formula highlights the importance of skill, demand, and irreplaceability in the workplace. Maybe you want to write the formula down in both of its forms and think about it until it's as much a part of you as your name. Repetition and contemplation will deepen your understanding and conviction. The reason it isn't spelled out on your checklist is because you might not want everyone to know what you're up to. This discretion allows you to work quietly and strategically towards your goals. The checklist is valuable only to a person who knows what the words really indicate. To others, it may seem like a simple list but to you, it is a blueprint for success. Furthermore, the checklist serves as a constant reminder of your commitment to personal and professional growth. By regularly reviewing and adhering to it, you ensure that you are always aligned with your long-term objectives. This disciplined approach is what separates successful individuals from those who merely drift through life. It requires consistent effort and a willingness to evaluate and adjust your actions based on the feedback and results you observe. In conclusion, the formula for getting rich and the accompanying checklist 
are powerful tools that, when used effectively, can guide you towards financial independence and overall success. Embrace these principles, make them a part of your daily routine, and watch as your contributions and rewards grow in tandem. All right, you've got the formula. As you think about it, its meaning will become clearer to you. With the formula, there are two rules which must be applied to properly use it. These rules are essential for translating the formula into practical actions that yield results. This formula, together with the two rules, is your recipe or your roadmap to earning all the money you really want. Consider it a comprehensive guide designed to navigate you through the complexities of financial success. Now let's take a look at item number two on your checklist, and I'm serious about your putting this checklist on your mirror. You'll notice it's pressure sensitive. This means it can easily stick to any surface, making it a constant visible reminder of your goals and the steps you need to take to achieve them. Item number two, the gold mine. The Pulitzer Prize winning playwright Archibald MacLeish, in his play The Secret of Freedom, wrote, the only thing about a man that is a man is his mind. Everything else you can find in a pig or a horse. Strong words, aren't they? But as long as you live, you'll never hear a truer statement. The key to every human being's success lies in his mind, the gold mine between his ears. This gold mine is a metaphor for the immense potential and untapped resources within your intellect and creativity. One idea can make you rich. A lot of good ideas can move you steadily upward in the work you do, and ideas are free. The power of a single innovative thought can transform your life, while a steady stream of good ideas can continually propel you forward. Now just think, there's nothing now being done commercially that will not be done better, much better, in the years ahead. This reflects the relentless pace of progress and the continuous improvement inherent in every field. Next year's homes and most of what's in them will be better than this year's. Next year's cars will be better. Advances in technology, design and functionality will ensure that products and services improve over time. Next year's manufacturing, distributing, marketing, selling and advertising should be better. Nothing is now being done as well as it must be done in the future. And every innovation, every new improvement will be somebody's brainchild. These innovations are the result of individuals tapping into their gold mines and turning their ideas into reality. Now, what's your specialty? How many good ideas have you come up with during the past year? Reflect on your unique skills and the contributions you can make in your field. If you continue on as you have in the past, where will you be and what will you be earning, say, a year from now, five years from now? This question prompts you to assess your current trajectory and consider the potential impact of your ideas and efforts over time. Every day of our lives, we walk or drive by more opportunity than we could develop in a lifetime, in 50 lifetimes. The world is brimming with possibilities, often hidden in plain sight, waiting to be discovered and harnessed. Back in the 1920s, Sinclair Lewis wrote that you can kidnap a man, blindfold him, take him to any city in the country with a couple of notable exceptions, put him in a chair in the downtown area, take off his blindfold, and he could sit there a week and not be able to tell you what town he's in. The streets are all alike. The buildings are all alike, the businesses all look alike. This is still largely true today, the reason for this being that most businessmen in this country are playing a game called follow the follower. Instead of innovating and standing out, many simply imitate others, leading to a lack of distinctiveness and innovation. If a man goes into business, no matter what line it happens to be, the first thing he does is make certain that his place of business, outside and inside, looks exactly like every other place of business of that type in the country. This tendency to conform stifles creativity and individuality. Do you know why? It's because he's been playing copycat since he was a year old, 
and does it without thinking about it. This behavior is ingrained from a young age, leading to a perpetuation of mediocrity. For the same reason, kids dress alike in school. He wants to be one of the gang. The desire to fit in and be accepted drives this behavior. He doesn't necessarily examine all the business establishments in his field and pattern his on the one outstanding example, the one that inspires him, the one that he can really believe in. He just does what everybody else in his business is doing, and by this simple process, he guarantees his own mediocrity. This approach ensures that he will remain average, blending in with the crowd rather than standing out. To break free from this cycle of mediocrity, you must dare to be different. Challenge the status quo, seek out the best examples in your field, and strive to exceed them. Tap into your gold mine of ideas and let your unique vision guide you. By doing so, you not only set yourself apart, but also pave the way for greater success and fulfillment. Whose drum are you marching to, if indeed you're marching to anyone's, and why? It's essential to reflect on this question because it challenges you to consider whether you're living your life based on your own values and aspirations or simply following the crowd. Remember, whatever you now do for a living will be done differently, quite differently, a few years from now. The world is constantly evolving and the way we work and live is always changing. Never in the history of mankind have the opportunities for all of us been so great. The digital age, technological advancements and globalization have created unprecedented possibilities. But the great majority of people will be the beneficiaries of progress, not those who bring it about. They will enjoy the benefits of advancements without having contributed to them. Which group are you going to belong to? If you want to be a contributor, not just a beneficiary, here's the first group rule. It appears on your checklist as the gold mine. So think, think deliberately and with a purpose. Use the gold mine between your ears. Begin by thinking at a special time every day. This habit of deliberate, focused thinking can unlock the potential within you and lead to significant breakthroughs in your personal and professional life. Back during the Depression, a New York lumber dealer was growing rich while other lumber dealers were going broke. When asked how he did it, he said, Every evening when I get home, I close myself up in a quiet room, sit in a comfortable chair, and ask myself, how will my business be conducted ten years from now? Then I try to do it now. This forward-thinking approach allowed him to anticipate future trends and implement them ahead of his competitors. Instead of competing with every other lumber dealer, which is what they were doing, he was creating. He was doing the very thing man was designed to do, the very thing man does best. He was innovating and leading, not following. A company growing at the rate of 10% a year will double its size in less than eight years, but a man can improve his effectiveness 50% or 100% a year or more. The experts tell us that every one of us has within him deep reservoirs of ability, even genius, that he habitually fails to use. Well, let's begin now to reach into these deep, rich areas of pure net profit and use more, more of our real abilities. Let's think. Deliberate thinking can transform our potential into real, tangible outcomes. Here's the best way I've found to make yourself think. Start getting up a little earlier than you're accustomed to. Right off the bat, this gives you extra time that 95% of the men in this country are not using at all. This additional time can be your secret weapon for success. One hour earlier, a day gives you six, one, two extra 40-hour weeks a year. But at this time in the morning, take a refreshing shower, dress, Get yourself a fresh hot cup of coffee if you're a coffee man and then sit down to a clean sheet of paper. The quiet morning hours can be the most productive time for clear, uninterrupted thought. At the top of the paper, write your financial goal. Now, this is the amount of money per year you intend to earn soon. 
be specific and ambitious. Incidentally, you might like to keep this to yourself too. It's nobody's business but yours. Then start to think. Think about your goal and what it'll mean to you and your family. Visualize the benefits and the impact of achieving this goal. Then see how many ideas you can come up with to help you reach that goal. Ideas to improve what you now do for a living. Consider new strategies, improvements in efficiency, or innovative approaches. Ways of increasing your contribution to match your income goal. The key to earning more is providing more value. You know, jobs don't have futures, people do. No matter what line of work you may be in, there is within it more than enough opportunity to last a lifetime. Opportunities are abundant, but it requires effort and creativity to uncover them. You don't have to think of brand new ideas or revolutionary new ways of doing things, although you well might come up with some. Even small, incremental improvements can lead to significant gains over time. Think of ways of improving what is now being done. This mindset of continuous improvement is crucial for long-term success and growth. Additionally, embrace the power of curiosity and lifelong learning. Always be on the lookout for new knowledge, skills and insights that can enhance your effectiveness. The more you know, the more you can leverage your abilities to create value. Engage with experts, read widely and never stop asking questions. This inquisitive approach will keep your mind sharp and open to new possibilities. Surround yourself with positive influences and like-minded individuals who share your drive for success. Building a supportive network can provide encouragement, feedback and opportunities for collaboration. Learn from others' experiences and share your own insights to foster mutual growth. Lastly, maintain a resilient and optimistic attitude. Challenges and setbacks are inevitable but your ability to persevere and stay focused on your goals will determine your ultimate success. View obstacles as opportunities to learn and grow and never lose sight of the bigger picture. In summary, by adopting a proactive and deliberate approach to your personal and professional development, you can harness the full potential of your gold mine. Start each day with purpose, set clear goals, and continuously seek ways to improve and add value. This disciplined mindset will not only help you achieve financial success, but also lead to a more fulfilling and impactful life. If you are to increase your income by the amount you've specified, you must find ways of increasing your contribution, your service. This means adding more value to whatever you do, whether it's through improving your skills offering better service, or finding more efficient ways to complete tasks. The key to this is to be found in your mind, in that gold mine between your ears. Your mind is the source of creativity and innovation that can drive your success. Try for five ideas every morning and write them down. This practice stimulates your creativity and keeps you focused on continuous improvement. Save those sheets of paper in a special idea file. Keeping a record of your ideas allows you to review and refine them over time. Many, perhaps most of your ideas will be worthless, but some of them will be very good, a few will be excellent, and every once in a while you will come up with something really outstanding. This is the nature of brainstorming. Not every idea will be a winner, but the process will yield valuable insights. You see, five ideas a day is 25 a week, if you don't think on weekends. Now, that's more than a thousand ideas a year. This sheer volume increases your chances of hitting upon a truly transformative idea. One idea can get you to that income you're shooting for. The law of averages swings so far in your favor, you just can't miss. Try to develop a sense of expectancy. That is, try to hold a feeling that the goal you're shooting for is a sure thing and that it's only a matter of time before it's realized. This positive mindset will keep you motivated and focused. 
You know, Henry Ford didn't start making cars until he was 45. A friend of mine started a new company at 65. He's still going strong, and his new company has sales of better than $300 million a year. These examples show that it's almost never too late to achieve significant success. Age is not a barrier to innovation and achievement. Try not to think of things outside of your own line of work or whatever it is most interested in. Focusing on your field of expertise ensures that your ideas are relevant and actionable. To think well and profitably, you must discipline your thinking. This means setting aside regular time for deep, focused thought. Keep it on course, controlled. Avoid distractions and stay committed to your goals. Keep it in one field, specialize. Specialization allows you to become an expert in your area, increasing your value and contribution. Now, for the final item on your checklist. It appears as the word, and the word is attitude. Attitude has been called the most important word in the language. Your attitude shapes your perception of the world and influences your actions. William James put it this way. He said, The greatest discovery of my generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes of mind. This means that by changing the way you think, you can change your life. Now, this is something to think about can alter their lives by altering their attitudes of mind. It's another way of saying we become what we think about. Your thoughts have a powerful impact on your reality. By maintaining a positive and proactive attitude, you can overcome obstacles and stay focused on your goals. Believe in your ability to succeed and act with confidence. Your attitude will influence how others perceive you and how you navigate challenges. To implement this, start by identifying any negative thought patterns that might be holding you back. Replace them with positive affirmations and a mindset of growth and possibility. Surround yourself with positive influences and seek out experiences that reinforce your optimistic outlook. Furthermore, adopt a habit of gratitude. Regularly reflecting on the things you are grateful for can shift your focus from what's lacking to what's abundant in your life. This shift in perspective can enhance your overall well-being and attract more positive outcomes. In summary, increasing your income and achieving your goals requires a combination of creativity, discipline, specialization and a positive attitude. By harnessing the power of your mind, Focusing on continuous improvement and maintaining a constructive mindset, you can unlock new opportunities and reach your desired level of success. Look at it this way. Your total environment, if you've been an adult for any appreciable period of time, your total environment is a reflection of you as a person. This means that everything around you, the house and the neighborhood in which you live, the car you drive, the clothes you wear, the job you do, the people with whom you regularly associate, is a direct mirror of your inner self. Your choices, behaviors and attitudes shape the world you live in. The house and the neighborhood in which you live, the car you drive, the clothes you wear, the job you do, the people with whom you regularly associate, your total environment is an exact and merciless mirror of you as a human being. Now, if you feel your environment can stand some improvement, you have only to improve your attitude and your world will gradually change to reflect the changing person. By shifting your mindset and adopting a more positive and proactive attitude, you can influence every aspect of your life. This transformation starts from within and manifests outwardly, creating a more favorable environment that aligns with your improved self-perception. Here's how to change your attitude beginning now. Begin to act as would the person you most want to become. That is, if you were already in possession of the goal you're shooting for, how would you conduct yourself in all of your affairs? Visualize your ideal self and start embodying those qualities today. Well, do it now and tomorrow and the next day. Consistency is key. 
Make it a daily practice. Begin now to act the part of the person you most want to become, and you'll end by becoming that person. This method, known as acting as if, helps to rewire your brain and build new habits. Subtly, in little ways, in the way you dress, in the way you talk, in the unfailing courtesy you show to every person with whom you come in contact. These small changes accumulate over time and lead to significant personal growth. Begin to act the part of the person who has already achieved that which you're shooting for. The German philosopher Goethe gave us the secret when he said, before you can do something, you must first be something. This profound insight emphasizes the importance of identity in achieving success. When you behave like the person you most want to become, the things that person would have will tend to come to you. By adopting the mindset and behaviors of your ideal self, you attract the opportunities and resources that align with that identity. It's simply cause and effect. Your actions create the conditions for your desired outcomes. Don't be in too big a hurry. It takes longer to build a skyscraper than a chicken coop. Great achievements require time, effort and patience. Build slowly, steadily and well. Lay a strong foundation and build upon it consistently. Then, when you make it, you'll keep it. You'll stay on top. Sustainable success is built on solid groundwork. Always be suspicious of the so-called get-rich-quick scheme or sudden success. Such promises are often illusory and unsustainable. Never forget that word, attitude. It's your attitude toward the people with whom you come in contact that will determine their attitudes toward you. Your perspective and approach to life influence how others perceive and respond to you. The person with a great attitude toward life and the world is the person other people call lucky. This individual creates their own luck through positive interactions and proactive behaviors. He's not lucky. He's just using our old friend cause and effect. His causes are excellent and his effects have to be just as good. By consistently generating positive actions, he naturally attracts positive results. Let me give you three suggestions that will help you realize your dreams. First, don't fear to dream. Determine what you want in life. Scientific research clearly shows that dreaming is of fundamental importance to emotional stability. Daydreaming is equally important for you if you hope to develop a modicum of your potential. Second, you must discover what obstacles you will encounter on the way to your goals so that you can make a plan of action to overcome them. Remember, if there were nothing standing between you and your desires, it would be easy to see them fulfilled and they would most likely be unimportant. Also, as strange as it may seem, you must decide if you are willing to enjoy the benefits you will get once you have realized your goals. Third, don't be afraid of failure. Everyone has failures. What separates the failures from the productive and fulfilled individuals is how they deal with setbacks and setbacks. Happy the man who dreams and is willing to do whatever it takes to realize his dreams, don't be afraid to start. The climb is very likely to encounter obstacles, but you are more likely to reach the top. Take some time to imagine where you will be in one, five or ten years and analyze what you are doing to get there. If people could focus on their goals as hard as they do their worries, success would be assured. Now I want you to listen, take note, and learn the following 10 Essentials for Success by Marshall Field. I know that you, like me, want to make your mark in this life. One way to get seriously on your way to achieving that goal is to adopt Marshall Field's 10 Guidelines for Success. By the way, Marshall was one of the world's most successful businessmen, so his observations are worthy of the utmost credibility. No. 1. The value of time. Don't waste it. No. 2. The value of perseverance. Never give up. No. 3. The value of hard work. Don't be lazy. No. 4. The dignity of simplicity. Do not be complicated. No. 5. The value of character. Do not be dishonest. 
No. 6. The power of kindness. Do not be heartless. No. 7. The call of duty. Do not be irresponsible. No. 8. The. That the streets needed to be lit up. He hung a pretty lantern at the front door of his house and made sure the window and door panes were clean and the wick was well trimmed. Soon, Franklin's friends did the same thing. Eventually, the people of Philadelphia were ready to light up the streets of their city. Franklin was so convincing that even his most well-written statements were not enough to convince people. Which brings me to my question. How do you try to persuade other people? By scare tactics. By getting them to agree with you. If so, it's likely that you haven't been successful very often. And when you have, you've probably left a mess of damage and bad feelings behind. Remember that someone, maybe someone very important to you, is watching and learning from what you do. You are a great model. The best way to build character is not with lectures, but with daily examples of what to do. Leo B. Good luck. Paris was the place where the French Tennis Open took place. She had everything to lose when she played Martina Navratilova on stage. Martina was ranked number one in the world and Kathy was ranked number 45. Kathy did not have a perfect record, but it was good. Martina, on the other hand, had never lost a match all year. In fact, she kept track of 36 wins in a row. She said she had won 90 rounds and only lost three to strong opponents like Chris Everett Lloyd and Pam Shriver. Kathy was only 17 years old when the match happened and there were 16,000 people watching. As if all of these things weren't enough to ruin her game, there was one more thing. Kathy beat her opponent 6-4 in the first set. Maria won the second one 6-0. With the score tied 3-3 in the third set, Martina served. Everyone was shocked when Kathy won the set and the match. Kathy said, I played to win when asked about her plan, and I'm sure she won because she thought she would. Being sure of yourself while you wait is a great trait. There is strong proof that waiting with confidence is directly linked to success. Your success is directly linked to how sure you are in your own abilities. You will win if you plan for victory, expect victory, and believe in victory. You can be sure that you will win everything you do. Walter Bagehot said, The greatest pleasure in life is to do what other people say we can't do. And what about complaints of what we've done? It's simple to tell other people they're wrong and blame them for our problems. But I want to warn you that constantly criticizing other people can cause cardialgia, which is sharp pain in the cardia, the area between the esophagus and the stomach that presses on the heart. This can eventually cause a heart attack. Criticism doesn't usually help us get anywhere. Work does. There's no point in criticizing the cow for being in the fields all day. It won't make her milk production go up or get her out of there. Cows are not easily upset when they are criticized. We could, however, take the cow out of the cornfield and tie her to a stake, or we could fence off the cornfield and reach our goal that way. Doing something about the problem instead of just talking about it or asking why other people aren't doing something about it is often the difference between success and failure. Instead of having long conversations, act on your thoughts. If you want to do something, don't talk about it. People who like and dislike you will both talk about it after you're done. Blount, George W. These are two ways to calm down and stay balanced. Every day, we all deal with worry and anxiety. Experts say that some stress is good for you, but too much stress makes us sleepless, tense and angry and it also raises our blood pressure. First, we need to figure out what is causing the stress. Then, here are two ways to deal with it. We might be having the most trouble today because we disagree with a family member or co-worker. We should talk about the problem for a while if this is true. Getting over your pride, facing the problem head-on, is the best thing that you can do. There is a good chance that the issue is not as bad as we think. It could just be a mistake. We need to stop the problem before it gets worse. 
it will cause us stress that we don't need if we let it grow in our thoughts. That's right, the Bible says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. On the second point, let's get away from our stress. Find a way to get away from the everyday noise every day, even if it's just for a short time. Maybe reading helps us feel better, or maybe prayer or relaxing makes us feel better. In just a few minutes, doing a sport like running, swimming, fast walking or riding can make you feel great. We are going to be shocked and happy with the findings. I hope these ideas will help you deal with the stress that comes with taking on a task or aiming for a goal. Things that are stressful should be dealt with right away before they get worse and harder to control. Do whatever it takes to calm down. Reading, relaxing or working out are all good ways to do this. The hours will get better on their own if you pay attention to the minutes. Today, we're going to talk about some traits and actions that can help you make your life and relationships better, which will lead to better chances. The first thing is potentiality. Work on getting better at what you can do to make your life and the lives of those around you better. Your potential, or skills, are things you can and should work on improving. Remember that when we work on the sources, what makes the effects happen, we change the effects. You should work on your skills so that you can do more and better. If you want to inspire other people to do the same, remember that facts-based examples always work better than preaching. Second, be analytical and learn to separate your feelings and ego, especially when you are talking about things that need to be decided. We understand that it will be hard, but we believe it is possible. Third, learn to control yourself. You need to learn how to do the things you know you need to do, when you need to do them, and how long they take. We all know that making new, better habits isn't always easy, but it's one of the best ways to make our lives better. That's why you need to work on your self-discipline, because not having it is one of the main reasons why things don't go as planned. Fourth place went to focused planning and attention on what's important and other things that could be distracting. It's also important not to worry about who comes up with the best idea. Instead, focus on making sure the good idea grows and is used to get good results. Last but not least, surround yourself with people who are smarter and more talented than you. You don't have to meet them in person. There are lots of technologies that can help you connect with them. You will get more if you learn more. To improve your chances of success, you might want to become a master in a certain subject. We can learn new things every day thanks to the area of electronic media, which is always growing. This means that because there is so much information out there, it is getting harder and harder for one person to know everything there is to know about any one subject. So, if you become an expert in a certain important area, you can help your family, your neighborhood, or your business more. One example is that you might work in real estate. Things change so quickly in this business when it comes to money that one person can't keep up with it all. Pick a subject that interests you and is very important to you. Look into it from every possible angle. You can become an expert in your field by reading specialized magazines, cheap books on the subject, listening to audios, watching videos, and talking to people who are experts in the subject. This will help you make good decisions in your chosen field. Share your facts and let people know what you're up to. You will be able to do your tasks with more skill and quality now that you know more about them. By becoming an expert in a certain area and sharing what you know, you are making yourself more productive and making your work easier. Remember that if you help enough other people get what they want, you will get what you want in life. First, there are times when we have to push ourselves to do something. We just need to get back on track, grit our teeth and keep going. We might have to give a speech, but we're so scared we can't even stand it. Well, it might feel good to start that speech, even though our legs are shaking and our teeth are chattering. 
Also, most of the people in the room won't be able to tell that we're scared. Second, let's start a job now instead of waiting for the right time. Let's begin right away without waiting for the ideal conditions. We won't be able to reach our full potential if we wait for important events like Aunt Juana to leave, Juanito to solve his problem, a new mayor, governor or president, new designs or any other event that we can't control to happen before we start living our lives. We need to get over our fear of failing by having small wins. First, let's do the first thing. The first step is always the hardest part of a long trip. Face the things you're afraid of to get over your fears. No matter how good or bad a habit is, it starts out as dust and turns into thick lines over time. Some people say they don't have any money to spend, or even better, to invest. It's possible that you've heard it before, but you don't remember it well or give it the attention it deserves. Okay, now I want you to remember it and I'll make sure you do because you think it's very important. At least for now, we all have the same amount of one important thing. It's always a good idea to spend time with your family because it will bring you a lot of happiness. Every day, we all get the same 1440 beautiful minutes which we can spend carefully or not at all. We can't save them, bank them or save them. We need to use them. Be very careful with them and know how to use them well and your life will be useful and fun. Learn to be aware of how you spend your valuable 1440 minutes and then use them or invest them wisely. How do we get ahead? How can we change how we feel or what we think? When our bodies tell us they're hungry, we all know that eating will help. Even though it may seem strange, most people don't know what to do when they are hungry for spiritual, mental or moral food. Sometimes the answer to mental, spiritual or moral hunger is not as simple or quick as the answer to physical hunger, but it is always clear. If you ever find yourself on your knees in any part of your life, I promise you that written or recorded words can give you the information and motivation you need to get back up. Whether your mood has gone downhill and you're having harmful thoughts, or whether you are mentally or emotionally down, here's what you can do. You can feed your mind and emotions by being around inspiring people, reading motivational books, or getting lost in good biographies or autobiographies. You can also listen to music or recordings that make you feel good. These things will change your attitude and feelings, which will change how efficient and productive you are. Well, that's it. Three things to remember, three things to practice every day. These principles are simple but powerful. If you spent 16 hours a day, seven days a week practicing your golf swing, in a relatively short time, you'd have a grooved, beautiful swing like the pros. The same applies to developing a positive attitude and productive mindset. So practice your new attitude every day, every waking hour. Make it an integral part of your life. Practice thinking a few minutes every morning and you'll find yourself thinking all day long. This habit fosters continuous self-improvement and creativity. And remember the formula. Our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to our contribution, our service. This guiding principle ensures that your efforts and contributions directly influence your success. Go over the ideas in this message every day until they're as much a part of you as your name and your temporary address. Repetition and reflection help internalize these concepts. You'll notice that each time you listen, you'll hear something new. Each review offers fresh insights and deeper understanding. You'll get a new idea you failed to get before. The lesson is clear. If you change what you put in, you will get something different out. Listen to, watch, or read something helpful or inspiring for at least 30 minutes, and then share it with people you think could use it.